63 games for the Wizards. Ashley Beck, seven caps for Wales. How's everything going, mate? Are you okay? Yeah, all good, thanks. Um, just keeping busy. Quite lucky in terms of what I do, so I'm able to get out of the house and still work, and like uh, some people. So it's good to just just to be able to keep doing something and keep some sort of normality. Long time for you. Your last game for the Wizards was back in 2011, so 10 years ago. But I'm going to push on further than that. Do you remember your first game for Aberavon? Yeah, uh, Pont de Prix down in the Patalva Athletic. Uh, I think I was quite, I was only thinking about it earlier, actually, because obviously I knew I was coming on with you. And um, obviously, Scarf, I think, picked a red card up the week before against Eberville. So I ended up on the bench then, uh, me and Tips, first games. Yeah. And I think Lyshen and Gaddy were starting. So, mm-hmm. yeah, no, a long old time ago, but yeah, it sticks out just because of how it went, really. Because I don't think as going into sort of senior rugby, I couldn't have asked for really a better start, especially down there. And we're thinking, um, like, you know, what was your can, a long time ago? But can you reflect back and think, yes, you were making your way through obviously the pathway in Welsh rugby and, and things like that, of course, and, and you were obviously an Osprey at the time. But that being your first senior game, uh, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, what was your thoughts and emotions against Ponty as well? Ponty were, you know, high and mighty at the time as well. Uh, you probably know what it's like, Chris. When you're younger, you, you don't really give teams the respect they probably deserve when you're at that age. You just turn up to a game and think, oh, I can't really give a monkeys who weren't playing against. I just want to get on the field and... I think I was a little bit disheartened that I weren't starting, but I'd only been at the club sort of two weeks. So looking back at it, I was probably a little bit too cocky for my own good <laughs> going into the game. <laughs> um, but going into the game, it was just about sort of playing, getting involved. And I remember my parents being really nervous because my old man turned into Warren Gatlin by the time I was 15 and I'd played a couple of years. So he knew who Ponty were. Um, but then for the Obviously, the pan out the way it was. There a lot of people down there who, like, obviously, Mark Breeze was at the hospice at the time as well. And she had a bit of support and a bit of help. But I was kind of glad that going into them games, I didn't really think too much about the opposition. It was more about yeah. myself and Abraham and how, how we'd go. I, rem- I remember I was playing for your debut. Um, again, didn't know who Ashley Beck was, 17 year old on the bench. I remember, I think it was in, in seconds or minutes, you made this sharp break, went through, and you were just, you had that gliding type of deceiving pace about you. You were quick, but it looked, you look you look slow, but you're quick, if that makes sense. It's like deceiving, you're gliding through, and, like, and you're fending people. You know, where, where did you really pick up those type of traits? Because obviously, I, I still watch you play now, and you, you, you still have that about you. I think it's just being slow, Chris. I don't think I've, I've ever been called quick. It's <laughs> been more... I don't know. It's just something I never really thought about too much. Um, again, you just I've always played rugby because I loved it and you try and do the right thing at the, at the right time. And I think it is just... I don't ever look like I'm sprinting because I'm not. And I think we laugh and joke up here now with the conditioners because they're always saying about you, you hardly hit high-speed meters. <laughs> And it's probably because I've been lucky coming through age group with sort of Christian Phillips. And then I ended up with Richard Carter and Abraham. And then you go in, if I make half a break, I've got someone quicker on my outside. So I don't really need to move any faster. <laughs> I can finish things up. So it's always been that kind of way. But um, I think it's just enjoying having the ball in your hands mm-hmm. and wanting to attack. And I was lucky enough to play on the sevens and like again with yourself. And it's those kind of traits where you just want the ball, you just want to attack and you just want to get into space. And, I think that's where that kind of mindset of having a bit of time on the ball came from. With playing so many games for Abraham, or, or, or let's change that, then semi-pro rugby, you know, leading into the career that you've had now, how did you think that that has, you know, held you in, or, or do you think it held you in good stead? Did it, did it give you the experience that you thought was needed? Or, you know, what, what was, basically, what was your views really on, on that, that small journey that you had with the club and semi-professional rugby? I loved coming to Abraham and I think like the boys noticed that at Abraham and I think that's why we got along so well um, between everyone. Like even if I weren't playing, I'd be down there on a Tuesday, Thursday, yes. mainly because Myra and the girls cooked a better meal than my father if my mother was in work. <laughs> but I really enjoy going down there and I think without having that experience, 
playing semi-pro, I don't think I would have got half half as far as I have because it's put me in the position to to get used to playing again. You you only get better in rugby by playing games, and I don't think that happens a lot for youngsters now. They waiting for opportunities to go and play for the Ospreys or for Worcester or whoever it is. But they come sometimes. You need someone to have an injury to get a chance. Whereas I wanted to go down and play for Aberdeen. I remember having conversations with Sean Ollie, even if I was twenty fourth man for the Ospreys. It'd be a case of, well, can I play for Aberdeen in the afternoon and then go down to the Liberty? And it was just something that was always in my mind. And even up here, I say to boys, you need to play as much as you can. Yeah. There's no good waiting until you're 25 and then going, oh, I'll have a couple of years of it. You want to be ready. And, and Aberdeen 100% made me ready for when my opportunities started to come along. What was your, I know we just spoke about your, your debut against Ponty, but what was your, your early type of memories at, at the club or... Uh, people that stood out for you or, you know, I guess just experiences maybe on the field and off the field? Um, there's obviously a lot of boys who helped as much as they could, you know, like you had yourself who was always there, especially like going away on the sevens and stuff with you, which made things a lot more comfortable. And I think that's where we got, got along better to know each other, to help. You had Gadi, even though he was a little bit different as being a young centre coming down there, he wanted to stamp his authority first and, <laughs> and show and show what he what he could do, which I think a few youngsters, especially my mates, felt Gaddy's forearm a couple of times in the <laughs> early days. That sounds like Gaddy, yeah. <laughs> um you know, George, I remember one of my first training sessions, and we used to do a drill with Kingy where it was sort of four pads one side, four pads the other. If you were outside half, it was great because you'd stand in the middle, you'd tip it on the backs or forwards, and you'd carry it. And I went on the closest side of the stand. And a few of the boys were like, I wouldn't go that side. And I was like, well, there's no one really opposite me. I'm worried about, you know, you know, and it's just holding a pad. I didn't know George took 15 minutes to warm up to be <laughs> Pete in the physio room before he strolled out to the closest group. And he made a beeline for me. And I think I went towards the one stand and my pad went to the houses across the other way. And I was just thinking, oh, my God, no wonder why they told me to avoid that side. Oh, yeah, so there's little bits around that, which, you know, I always found funny. And, you know, how James King used to take a lot of stick from <laughs> the moment he'd turn up to the moment he'd leave off field again. Um, I didn't really drink until I met a lot of you boys and <laughs> that, forcing me, is that forcing good me to drink. Right. It put me a good stead getting obviously getting ready for that older older boys taking socials and courts and I got a bit used to it. But then going to like after Cardiff with I think it was Trigger, Breezy, the two breezes and Buddha. And I ended up well walking around with them four and they're tackling each other into <laughs> bin bags, into bus stops. And I was thinking, oh my God, what have I got myself into? I ended up at some nightclub in Patal, but with um, which I don't think I've ever been to ever again since. Um, and then you've got the on field stuff, so, you know, like the, the cup final when we went and played against Ponty. It was a bit of a funny year because I was in and out, I was playing a little bit more of the Ospreys, but you know, to actually get to the stadium. The day probably didn't go as planned, but in terms of everything had gone in for four or five years playing at the club, you know, it was a great way to have a memory and, you know, enjoy them type of moments. Um, you know, I'd always remember sort of Steve shouting from the touchline and me being quite relaxed where I'd be sort of smiling or laughing or, you know, other boys trying to put him straight. But it, all in all, like, every memory I've picked up from Abraham, I could reel off loads because... Like, I love rugby and I love everything I've been through. And Abraham was, like I say, a massive part of what what made me to what I am. And, yeah, I could reel off so many different stories where I've had a great time. I think I totally agree with you. I think you were a player that came to the club who, well, from an ounce, well, from looking in, was you, you fell in love with the club, I thought, anyway. Yeah. And like you said, as you've said, you trained Tuesday when you probably didn't need to. You were there Thursday, you were there Saturdays. I think you were even there Saturdays when you weren't, weren't selected. Not not selected because you weren't in the team, but when maybe you were involved with the Ospreys and you'd still turn up. I think that's, that's quality. I think there's not many. There was a group of you, wasn't there? Tipperick, as you said, Kingy, um, that always wanted to play for the club. And I think it's quality that we had you guys come through because you you pushed us on as well, you know, cup final and things like that. It, it, massive help to you guys and stuff. But I remember, though, 
again, correct me if I'm wrong, you, there was a bit of a break in play between your appearances and you came back, I, I don't know if you remember or not, we played Glamorgan Wanderers away. It was a sunny, sunny day. <laughs> I, I don't think, yeah, I don't think you had played for a while, maybe six months, you could have been injured, I'm not sure. And we were all a bit like, oh, okay, Becky's back. Uh, let's see what he, and you like absolutely carved up, ripped. And I'm talking, as you just said, you know, fans offloads, tries, you were ripping the ball off people. Again, difficult question really, because you probably don't remember it, but from, from what happened between that period of time, whether you were injured or not, again, I can't remember, to coming back. And, do you remember the game at all? I do, yeah. Um... Firstly, I wasn't injured when I was with our brand. And that was when I was fresh all the time and fit. It wasn't until later. <laughs> what uh, period of time that you didn't play for us for whatever reason? I don't know what that was, but I think it was around the LV times with the Ospreys and the international windows. So I was kind of in and around 24th man bench. Um, and I was coming back, and I think it was around my 21st birthday uh, because there was a Bit of a party afterward after that game, and obviously Will Price had played. Uh, Matthew Jarvis was playing, so and again, it's not often you go to Glamorgan Wanderers with a lovely day. Normally, it's oh, right. hammering down with rain and you're getting <laughs> filled in by someone. So yeah, no, I remember the game. Um, I just think it was one of them games where everything went right. I don't think it, I, that, I could have tried to chip and chase for my own twenty-two. I think it would have come off that day, but yeah, but is, um, that, is that you just being modest, or you know, like I said? What I'm trying to get at was it was a period of time of you just, just escalating and getting better. I can't be down to the fact that everything just went right for that day. I remember, genuinely now, I remember that day. It was like I've never seen, and I've never seen since a player play like that for Abraham ever. Um, yeah, I think it was just one of them days where everything just <laughs> fell into my lap, Chris. It wasn't, uh, yes. you, know, you just really enjoyed it. And like I said to you, like it wasn't as if I found some people probably found going to a premiership club a bit of a chore mm. like oh I don't really want to go down there or you'd see other boys would be sitting and I, I loved coming down and playing and like that was even having stick off you and Budder and Chalky you know yeah, Breezy would be off at some point but I used to love coming down and I felt a part of it and I think that was when I was probably at my most comfortable in terms of yeah. I was happy to actually play the pictures in front of me I, I was enjoying it I'd, I'd try something um, and then, yeah, that day, just everything that I did try and attempt came off. <laughs> well, you you were class. I don't, I don't think I've ever told you <laughs> since, but I, just, I, I, and I I didn't play. I didn't play that game. I was watching, and I was I, I was like player cam, and I was thinking, this guy is just incredible. And you would know that you would go on further to do what you did at 17, 18, but that day was kind of like, oh, wow. But... Um, you know, you, you, you went on to play for Wales Sevens, I think, after that. What was that like then for you, playing, touching base with Wales Sevens? I think you, like me, I never really played Sevens growing up. I don't think I ever did, actually. And then all of a sudden, I'm playing international Sevens. Was that the case for you as well? Did you play much Sevens? Uh, I was in Doravel in comp, and it was quite a big rugby school, really, in the Nice area. So we'd always have Sevens competitions, but it wasn't a case of knowing how to actually play Sevens properly. It was just a case of what, seven view on the field, all the best, just try and beat the other team. And and that's the way I always kind of seen it. Um, so to, to go and, you know, go to Dubai and South Africa, and it was just something I never thought I'd end up doing, especially the way the seven circuit probably started to go in terms of there wasn't many regional players going down that yeah. route anymore. Um, but then to go and experience it was incredible. And, you know, like, even some of the memories out there in South Africa with, I know I texted you not so long ago when a song came on and I was like, oh, swanky ripping doors off the hinges. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it was, you know, you look back now and again think it was another step in the right direction. So I remember coming back off that and how much it helped my fitness. And I felt at that point how much fitness was important because we played against Nisa the Knoll. And I think it was probably one of the times I think they ended up losing, but they had... That was when they had that star-studded team where they had boys from everywhere. And and that day, I think, we lost with maybe like a push-over scrum in the in the last play of the game. 
Um, yeah, that's right. And that, and that day, I was running around and I was thinking how light I felt on my feet. I felt a lot better. I was moving better. And it was another area where I thought, like, yeah, it's probably I need to look at this a little bit more because it was just all about playing rugby with a smile on my face up until that point. <laughs> <laughs> with, the, with the skills though that did you feel under pressure at all in those sevens competitions you know because you're so I probably look like because I'm a bit more sort of you know some people want to go me about my body language over the time but how I'm quite relaxed and I remember even on that seven circuit where Hodges had to go me because I didn't sprint under the posts for one of the tries I just oh, got over the I, line of, I remember against New Zealand wasn't it yeah, and I just put the ball down over the line instead of running under the posts. And it's probably something where I needed a bit of a gear change in that kind of environment, but it wasn't the way I kind of played because I was so used to 15s. It's probably like skills I found quite quite easy within things. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the bit that I'd find a little bit more difficult would be because I didn't have that gear change, it would, would be the breakdown stuff where it'd be like, someone would be on the ball quickly or, you know, you need to get out and win the race. So them kind of scenarios were probably something which I had to think about a little bit more. But in terms of attacking sense, it was, you had so much more time on the ball. Yeah. I bet you loved that, didn't you? I did until the Fijians started blitzing from everywhere and then I had it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and do you remember, when, yeah, didn't you faint on the plane as well? I can't remember that, Chris. Oh, of course you can't. Whatever. Actually, no, it was one of the referees up here as well, because obviously we had a good night out, didn't we? And <laughs> the next day it felt a little bit rough. Like I said, I didn't drink probably till the year before when you and a few others corrupted me. <laughs> um, and yeah, it was either be sick on the plane or get down the front. And I collapsed, woke up, and there was a blanket on me with a gas uh, air. <laughs> uh, uh, and it was... Um, Oh, what's his name? JP Doyle. JP Doyle, yeah. Was down the front at a sit by him and he gave me his <laughs> chocolate bar and said, You better get some energy in you. <laughs> oh, right. Oh. Let's uh, let's let's crack on with your um your your 15, right? Your wizards 15. It's your team. You could obviously choose it from the time that you were playing with us. So start a full back. Again, just give a bit of context around who you've chosen, who you haven't chosen, and things like that. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Yeah, so I've obviously been thinking about it a little bit and I've probably gone down the route of I was just going to pick boys who were at Abraham for probably a long time and at the start of my stuff. Yeah. Um, I wasn't going to start chucking in Osprey boys and boys who'd been in and out. And, um, because, to be honest with you, most of the time it was only me down in Abraham with a lot of you boys. So it was a case of... Um, so, yeah, fullback, again, played with a couple of really good boys down there, but one that always stuck out and probably, again, giving me a lot of stick for certain things was uh, Bamsey. Bamsey. He had a great left peg, a lazy step, and I know I used to rip into him about his hairline a little bit, but I'm starting to, fo I'm starting to follow him now, the older <laughs> yeah, I get. So I'm, I'm, I'm there as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, in terms of, like, his talk, you know, who he'd played for, but he was always one of the like humble person really he didn't really like go about his way his work in any different way to anyone else he was just loved playing rugby and and loved to try stuff which obviously I respected because he really enjoyed ball in hand and that's something which uh, I really enjoyed myself yeah see you remember Bamsey as fullback as well and so do I but everyone seems to be picking him on the wing I don't remember him as a winger but hey, there we are Full, he's a fullback as well uh, okay Bamsey lovely that uh, wingers um Quite reluctant to pick him, but I think with his try scoring record, you've got to pick him at uh, some point. And you know, Carter, in terms of his finishing, I think he left for a year before he came crying back to us at one point. And of course, yeah, you know, team. how much his try scoring was missed within that year, yeah. Um, because he is out and out gas, isn't he? And as soon as you give him a little bit of space, he, he's gone. And I think you always need someone like that in your team because. Um, he's just got that extra edge to it, and and again, he's another real good bloke. Mm. He's someone who, again, gave me a lot of stick. He's probably prepped me a lot in terms of taking banter off people. Because even now, I'm up here, and you know the childish sort of banter you have when 
you're there. I remember being on the physio bed with, I think Sharon was giving me a massage and Carter comes in and rubs deep heat up my backside. And, and do you know what? I'm doing it now up here to people, but the South Africans, <laughs> <laughs> the South Africans don't take it very well. So I'm, I can <laughs> imagine, yeah. <laughs> Did they clip normally like someone like Trigger or Buddha would, would cut your um, the shoelaces as well, you know, right through the middle of the laces? That was one of the um, Yeah, no, they didn't. Them two kind of looked after me, which was nice. Oh, that's, that's I didn't really I didn't really get too much of them. So it was more Carter and Bamsey do something or Gaddy would join it. Yeah. Or you, you, Breezy. Yeah. Mark just done it because he was trying to deflect because of his hairline everyone wanted him to shave it at that point so <laughs> happy days right Carter at the winger uh, bit of a toss up then between Steve Steve Davis Stella yeah Steve and Richard got Thomas Richard Thomas yeah no both both from down west don't they both yeah. both a little bit strange <laughs> um <laughs> Stella's a little bit quieter than than Rich, but I think I went for Rich in the end just because he was a little bit bigger. He offered something a little bit different. Um, life and solar stuff, you know, and all the arguments you'd end up having with Nicky Lloyd or Kingy <laughs> over something. It's just worth having him in there for for them them times and He's and at the moment, awesome. yeah, no, both of them, yeah, you know, especially Rich, he slotted in the thirteen a couple of times. Um, because of his size and his try scoring. Um, and yeah, he'd definitely be someone I'd chuck on the wing. Happy days. Back three looks nice. Carter can't kick. Uh, Dickie T reckons he can kick. Bamsey, hell of a left peg. So you're, you're right there. Bamsey's bailed him out. Yeah. So can't kick. <laughs> Centres. Yeah, so I'm going to... It's probably only two I've properly played with at Darbra Avenue, and you had uh, Gaddy, who was probably there for my first two or three seasons. Uh, again, when you speak to people about Gaddy, even before I got there, because he played a lot of fullback and he was quick. And But then by the time I think I was coming along, I didn't get a couple of knee injuries, which slowed him up a little bit. So that's why he moved into the centre. If I've got that right, I thought he just told me that because he, he got slow. Um, he put on some weight, so he went into the centre, but then he was after <laughs> Yeah, it gets slower, yeah. But again, he's like a very good competitor. Like always wanted to win. Was always passionate about playing for Abraham. And I think that's what came through in a lot of them training sessions where I was saying he's catching people on the jaw. Um, <laughs> like, lovely bloke. Uh, and again, just how much he talks and helps. Yeah. And I think sometimes people don't realise how good talking is in terms of helping people around you. Mm. Um and he definitely probably made made things for me easier, so I was able to stand out a little bit more by just the work he was doing. Yeah, and it was wasn't really picked up on or noticed a lot. And to go and play senior rugby, and you know, he'd always have my back in certain aspects as well. If someone was mucking around, because there's a couple of cross keys boys that used to ruck down my Achilles, which I was never too happy with. And you know, you'd have someone like him along with. A couple of the rest of you, yeah. and he was just always there, sort of watching out and sticking up. He was a top player, Gary. I love Gary. Have you got him thirteen or twelve? Yeah, no, we will keep him at thirteen. You can, you can put him at thirteen, yeah? okay? Thirteen. Leave, leave, him, at th leave him at thirteen. Okay. Obviously, he, got, he was a bit slight though, wasn't he? So we need someone with a bit more weight behind them for twelve. I, think. I had that big hoop, didn't I, coming through? So I was able to carry a little bit. There. <laughs> Hips. <laughs> um, so at 12 then uh, real good mate of mine I, I'm taking the praise for bringing him to Aberavon in the first place yeah, uh, and I've seen he's been in a lot of people's teams as well like, again another person who I think Bud uh, knocked, the, knocked the nail on the head last week when he said he's underrated in terms of people yeah. don't give him the credit and again it's, he's probably similar to Gardy where he does a lot of the work which frees up other people to do stuff and when he does something good, it's as if, oh, he should be doing that anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Will, Will Price. Yeah. I, just in case someone was going to gamble with someone else. <laughs> yeah, he better say his name, yeah. 
<laughs> I think I said on Buddha's one, he's unbelievable. Like ge- generally, week in, week out, I think he's I'm, yeah. right. You you hit the nail on the head by saying, I think just people think, you know, that, that he should be doing that. Yeah. Like, what he's doing is like unbelievable. We, like week in, yeah. so consistently, mad, mad. That's and again, the- he's so quiet. He's so he just gets his work done. But again, like Gaddy, he's a, he hates losing. He's a competitor. He wants to win all the time. And I think that comes across when he plays. But when he gets off the field, until he's had a beer, he's probably one of the quietest people you know. Mm. And then he has a beer and he's a complete different person. <laughs> <laughs> That's true as well, yeah. Happy day, let's break the centre partnership bar. Who to do... You don't have to answer this question because I know Will's your mate as well, but who would you prefer playing with? Um, I think it was it's different because of the timing with it all. Like, obviously, when Will was starting to come through, I think all the gym stuff was massive. People were in the gym all the time. They were doing a lot more. There was a lot more academy kids started playing around that time as well. So there was quite a lot going on. And when Will was playing, because he's, you know, he was a lot bigger than sort of me and Gardy, he was able to attract two or three people to free space up for me or give me more time on the ball, which yeah. was always a good thing. But then with Gardy, it was always a case of his talk would help. Is his rugby awareness and he probably doesn't get enough credit for how smart he was within the game as well and how he's seen it yeah which made everyone else around it's just Gaddy didn't have the way of saying it in the correct tone to get everyone on page he'd just stand up having a scrap with someone by the end of the, <laughs> by the end of the conversation yeah that's true yeah, yeah no they were, I, I couldn't really pick between them but if you moulded them both into one I think you'd probably have an international on your hands you're right there but yeah, they're both quality. I do actually love playing with both, especially when they play both together as well, you know, because obviously... They're... Thanks, mate. Drop me. Thanks. No, no. But, uh, <laughs> no, no, you hey, said enough. You're always in my team, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you're in my team, just for back to the Morgan Wanderers game. Um, right, nine and ten. So, again, I think out to half, I think everyone in Arbor Arvin has picked the same bloke. Um, around that time, you probably... It was... Javi and Jamie were kind of in and out. Javi played for, I think, every premiership club in in the Ospreys region by the time he was 21. So he was just settling down. But Jamie, kind of what he'd been through, uh, what he'd done, you know, how respected he was of the club by everyone. He was, I remember coming through and even watching all this stuff now with the NFL and Tom Brady, he was treated like Tom Brady at the club. 100%, mate. Yeah, and he was protected by him as well. His hood be up, his hat be on top of it. He'd have them old school trousers with his socks pulled out with his Mizuno boots or his old rugby boots on, spiralling the ball 40 metres. And, you know, when you had George, yourself and everyone else in front of him, he was he was like Tom Brady for Abraham coming through. <laughs> he was. Do you remember, oh, you probably missed that, he, he, um, he broke his arm. His forearm, and he started wearing a forearm guard as well. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why then he turned into that mindset of smashing people with his forearm. He started getting yellow card all the time. But yeah. Yeah, no. He, he was, again, and it probably suited me playing with someone like Jamie because Jamie was a distri- distributor. So he'd just give the ball a lot of the time. So for forwards, if you're running off him, it was great because you had time on the ball. For me, then wanting time on the ball to just get it quickly off him was always the dream because I could do something. Yeah. So I think it just suited suited what I kind of wanted out of the game as well. And I, again, another great talker. So between him, Bamsey and Gardy, it always made my job easier. It was just a case of you do what you need to do and us three will yeah. hold forth. Yeah, they were, they were class. I just think, talking about it now, I think I think you mentioned it earlier, they, they knew each other so well as well. I think once you have that relationship on field, and they just they just knew each other's strengths and weaknesses. You know, players like Bamsey, uh, Jamie, Gaddy, stuff like that. And yeah, you came in as well, so they, they knew what you wanted as well. Yeah. The only issue was is that if something went wrong, them three wouldn't blame each other. So I tend to get it at twelve. <laughs> and being the youngest, it was like, ah, oh, it's his fault. Nine. Nine. Yeah. So again, for some reason there was loads of nines that come through the club. You know, Chrissy Morgs, Pritchard. Um, uh, Jenks was there only for a bit as well. Came down from uh, yeah, Andrew Sh- Jenkins. Yeah, Shenko. Shenko. 
So we had so many people down there, but then I think, you know, you look back at it and in terms of what Pritch, I think, brings as a scrum half, doesn't look like your average scrum half on times. And I know Ford probably got the better of him on a few occasions, but but in, like even when he looked big, he was still busting lines, he was still finishing off tries, he was still playing what was in front of him and just his overall energy for it. And again, him playing with someone like Jamie took the pressure off him. So he was able to do what he needed to do to get the best out of himself. And it, yeah, some of the stuff he could do on the rugby field was um, was was incredible. Yeah, he, how many times he'd bail us out and do something or nothing. Yeah, it's class. I, I don't know if you've got any comments on his service, but I remember his service was like pinpoint uh, powerful as well. Like you know, so yeah. the, the speed of service is quite quick. So. I don't know if you, if you remember that at all. Like his service, because you know I I always think of a nine and think of a service. So I I could probably differentiate between as you said Shenko Pritch and um, Chrissy Mox, but I remember Pritch is just fast fast service like a bullet. Yeah, I think when he was looking to pass, he was going to whip it in, and get it to you as quick as he could. Shenko was getting old and fragile at the time when he so his arms weren't the same spinning the ball out, and then you had Chrissy Chrissy Moggs would be looking. For himself first, and then he passed later. So it was always, it was always good to have that difference coming off the bench as well. Yeah. And I just think, yeah, with Pritch, the service and that ability to just do something at the right time was uh, was something which we needed, especially with the pack we had. You need to keep on the front foot because the boys didn't like going backwards, and they'd let you tell tell you about it as well. Hundred percent. Yeah. As a quality back like that, lovely back. Let's move on to the big boys. Should we go to props? Props. Um, yeah, so I've gone Tony. Yeah, Tony Ed. Yeah. Tight Ed. Tight Ed. You know, when we were speaking earlier, saying um, <laughs> about being 17 and just turning up, at that point, one and three were just props to me. It was just. They still are the scrum. <laughs> I don't even know what they do. So, yeah, between him and I know like Chalky as well then. Yeah, Chalky got the loose. But then I'm... Was it the other way around? No, Chalky loose head. Tony yeah, no, you're right. You're, you're right. I even Googled a couple of games from back before just to make <laughs> sure. You're, you're right. You're right. Cheers, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, but then I get like, you know, in terms of the league I'm in now, how crucial set piece is. Mm. And I think then I probably took it for granted that, yeah. oh, you know, it's just a scrum. They didn't spend over. They probably got a gentleman. They don't push against each other. I like <laughs> this, like same thing. But the amount of work they put in and for us to have such a solid base, I don't think it was an area we ever struggled with was scrum and line up. Maybe line up the odd occasion because Breezy couldn't hit a donkey's ass with a banjo. That's good. But That's we good. were... <laughs> <laughs> it's true yeah. uh, but with with the boys we had down there even the boys on the bench yeah um, yeah there were some big boys down there and just and I think a special mention to Magic just because of my first game away in Tradiga playing against the Division 2 team yeah. and he gave me the old Undertaker backwards didn't he <laughs> you didn't play against Tradiga did you? <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. I remember getting up there, looking across, going, Jesus, look how old that bloke is, brother. Yeah. And he was round, I thought, oh, he's definitely in the front row. He came out the number 12 on his back foot. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the beauty of the cup. Yeah. Oh, bad. Yeah, he, had, um, he was on the floor, that one. Yeah. So it didn't work out as planned, did it? No, it didn't, didn't go well for that. <laughs> so, who, so who have we gone with? One and three. So I've gone for Tony and Chalky. Happy days. Okay, great. Great front row. Uh, and, and the hooker in the middle. Okay. I know he couldn't throw, but he he was great around the field, wasn't he? He was class. And it pains me to say, yeah, but, it, but he was class. What he brought, the sort of club. And then I remember when he went to the Blues, didn't he, for a season or two. And the club obviously took a little bit of time transitioning from Mark to other people. And I, again, he was someone who looked after me all the time. We had a good laugh and a joke at each other and ripped into each other and um, yeah just 
just his energy around it because he was always someone who the fans absolutely loved as well. Uh, and then one of my best moments with him, I think we played Pontypool down the park and we'd run a little funny at the front of the line now. Okay. And he was like a seal slap in the floor in the corner once he scored. I think it was his first try of the, of the season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it, yeah. Yeah, so there was... Uh, He's definitely someone you'd pick in your, your 15, especially for his ability. And his ball skills, which he never really showed too much of, because I think we were known for having such a big, hard pack that yeah. tipping the ball wasn't the in thing at the time. No, certainly and, not at the beginning, but he, he, he did come on with him. Yeah. I reckon he invented the no-look pass, so he'd like, you know, do, do that one. Like His hair was in his eyes, is it? Yeah, he couldn't look. <laughs> You reckon you invented it, but uh, I'm not too sure. Uh, oh, by the way, well, have you seen his clips? Has he sent you his highlight reel? Because he, he keeps showing people his highlight reel. He hasn't sent no, no. Yet. I oh. blocked his number. Yeah, uh, fair enough. <laughs> it's good. I might do the same. Okay, uh, great. Chalky, Breezy, and uh, Tony Edwards. In the boiler house, the second rows. Uh, so, again, numbers didn't really mean too much to me. But I just knew both of them put their head in the wrong place and got filled in got filled in for a career <laughs> um, so yeah the one that got filled in the most was probably Buddha he yeah. uh, he was my captain sort of at Abraham. Um I think by the time I left I think you took over then as well yeah um, but just you know what he'd bring on the field again probably not someone you're going to see making a 50 metre break and if you did everyone was on their feet cheering and like, even the boys were cheering them on on the field yeah. But in terms of like slowing ball up, uh, being a nuisance, and like I said, getting filled in. I don't know how many times he'd go in to try and help someone, and he'd be the one on his back. <laughs> or he'd go in and help trigger. Tr- trigger be filling three of them in, and but they'll be on his back getting filled in by one on his own. <laughs> and it was probably the academy kid as well, which I don't know. <laughs> you uh, <laughs> But just the way he was, the person, like he was straight up talking to you, he'd tell you if he thought something, but in a nice way as well, she took it the right way. I think there was only the once where James King, we'd gone down to Kamal and Quinns, and King Eve, was, you know, it was his first season, so I'd go in, uh, oh, I'm so sore, I was lifting weights yesterday, my back's bad, and this and that, and, but uh, I don't think he, I think he'd walk up at 10 o'clock from a night shift, and absolutely let rip. But obviously, I've got a nervous laugh for the best of times. And I remember turning my head away and just giggling to myself. And Kingy was like, what's the matter with him? I said, Kingy, you've probably got to keep quiet. This situation's like that. He's been working all night. <laughs> Mate, remember that, and I was having a conversation with Butter about it. Like, you know, uh, yeah, because Kingy just retired. I said, why don't you um, message Kingy now to say... Uh, Happy retirement. Stuff. Tired. <laughs> yeah, you relax now, mate. Are you still tired? You don't have to clean anymore. <laughs> oh, brilliant. <laughs> I, I even remember that. I even cringe. I was like, oh, I think Buddha's Yeah, I remember. Buddha. Yeah, no, I was, yeah, his fingers were still black. His face was still black. And he was kind of like, is this kid serious? He's been squatting and cleaning yesterday. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Uh, Partner and my other second row, I've gone for fish. Yeah, fish, class. I think he was just, I don't know if it was the game we were talking about, Glamorgan Wanderers, but it was up there and it was on a nice day. So it's probably only one of them I've ever played in. I think it was. And I, I know when he got injured, I wasn't playing. So it must be the same the same game, yeah. Uh, and it probably, you know, it put a dampener on the whole thing that day because the performance of everyone and the scoreline. But fish, again, was underrated for what, what he could do. You'd look at him, he'd be smiling, wouldn't really have a care in the world, wouldn't have a, you know, wouldn't mourn at anyone. But when he'd play, he was just, he'd give you something different to what Buddha would give you. And he was, his work rate around the park was very good. So. He was an athlete. Yeah. Like a. Yeah. Fit, so fit. But I think that's how he got injured, wasn't it? By him making a break and someone jumped on his back and pulled him back over himself. I can't remember. I can, all I can remember is. I just can see it. It's, it was in the top. I was in the stand, top left-hand corner, wasn't it? Like as you. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, savage. Uh, and that probably shows, you know, then as well. Probably the first couple of athletic second rows starting to come through because it'd gone from your heavy second rows just to give weight to the front row to 
actually doing a little bit around the park and we we kind of had that already at our and it was just uh just a shame the way it kind of ended yeah yeah his quality fish was okay fisher and buddha um let's move on to your back row six you must love asking this one do you no i don't <laughs> i think people start putting me in there because they just feel awkward because I'm, I'm talking to them i'm gonna have to choose swank because i'm so <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, six I'm going to go for Trigger yeah. uh, again when I first come down just remember looking at him thinking oh my god who is this lunatic I'm not going to say nothing wrong to him because he's going to fill me in if I say anything and, still- and then you get and then you get to know him a little bit more and there's you know there's like a soft centre to it wasn't it where he'd he'd be a lovely bloke he'd look after you and again between like yourself, but the uh, trigger, I remember thinking if I'm on the floor and someone's come in for me, because I, I wasn't a scrapper, Chris, you know what? I, know you I knew what I knew. I knew I was safe. <laughs> so to have, you know, have him around and even just seeing some of the shots he used to put in on in terms of like, I remember Scarf coming back down to the to Abraham and he came short once and Trigger hit him out of nowhere, and I was thinking, "Oh my God! Thank God that's the other side of the field." And and he was, yeah, again another grafter, someone who was there to tidy up all the scraps and probably allows you to do a lot more yeah. of the free flowing seven stuff in the white channels, which you like to do. Well, now and again, and knock the ball on, yeah, oh, pun. Uh, <laughs> 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 Hands <laughs> yeah, that trigger was class. I used to love playing with trigger. They, they, they don't build him like like, like trigger anymore. Uh, of course, we got Lee Pennell. He's probably the last of the, like, that type of flanker. But yeah, yeah there's not many like trigger. He, he was quality, wasn't he? I think again, it was like that straight talk inside to him where you know if you needed to ramp a team up and get them going a little bit, and you needed someone just to put a hit on or to you know to just 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 to caress someone's face in a ruck, just to sort things out a little bit. It was always Trigger that was gonna that was gonna do that for you when he saw there was a couple of red really, really quickly. Like yeah. He'd go from like just playing rugby, you know, tackling it, and then the reds would come and then that's it. That's the end of Trigger. You won't, <laughs> you won't get him back. <laughs> and the likelihood is he's gonna get you a card or a red card within minutes. Yeah, you got a feel for King you mind you some of the boys get the coach. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh, brilliant. Right, seven. Yeah, I'm just gonna say this because you're asking me. Um, of course. <laughs> no, Put Tipper in there, mate. Put tips in it. No, I don't think tips played enough. And again, even when I thought about putting tips in, it was a case of I put you eight because of what you actually brought. Nice, mate. Uh, on the field, uh, but again, I don't think tips played enough in terms of no, I think being down are. next. He he went through a lot with his back. Mm. He had a couple of issues there. He was all about bulking at one point. So he, I know he missed a lot of rugby at a younger age. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like you again, leader in terms of helping boys. Uh, but that always had that back up with you there. And you can see why it was such a natural progression for you to take that role over at the club. On the floor, I know you loved the swinging forearm. You probably picked it up from Gaddy. Um <laughs> And then even just the turnovers in crucial moments, you know, when you are under the pump, which teams sort of, you do get it. And you can only imagine now with the new laws, how many times you'd get penalised because of not releasing. And... No, you're right. <laughs> this game's not going to anymore. That's for sure. Um, no, but in terms of like big moments and key plays, which again, at that point in time, I probably didn't give enough respect to because I just wanted to attack with a rugby ball. But when you look back to it, the amount of times we'd be under our sticks, you'd come out with a turnover, or it'd be a big hit, and like someone else would be backing you up. Or, and even to the point where how competitive you were. Yeah. That's the one thing a lot a lot of the Abraham boys, and I probably realised, even from coaching sort of Trabanos when I was down there, boys who play semi-pro do it because they love it. It's not about the money as such, and they're all competitive, they all want to win. And Abraham, we had so many boys like that. And I think that's what drove a lot of people to do so well and for the club to do so well at that point. And like between you, Gaddy, and Buddha, you know, it was a big thing about driving the, the whole squad. Yeah. 
I appreciate those words, mate. Thank you very much. All right, right mate. I your last. As well. I was gonna, I was gonna bat you. I was gonna come <laughs> to what's there. Okay, and um, eight. Who's your last? Who's the man of eight? Uh, again, tough call because you had the sort of uh, Rory Gallagher. Yeah, I see Rory was. He had outstanding feet, you know. But one week he'd be man of the match and he'd be be it by a milestone, and then he just he had, was quite unlucky with a lot of niggles as well, wasn't he? He'd pick up a lot and he'd miss a couple of weeks. But then I go back to like again old Ed, and probably compliments the back row a little bit more in yeah. terms of front foot. Would be someone like George. Um, I know Strongy as well when he came down, put a sort of good shift with it. But like, yeah, Aaron for someone. Bray. Remember Aaron Bray? Yeah, I think he was more towards the end. Uh, I think he went to France, didn't he? Yeah, went to France. I. Um, but like George, in terms of just carrying rubbish ball, didn't like always have the front foot ball to run onto. But when you knew the ball yeah. was slow, he'd be someone to take three or four people in. Um. Again, lovely bloke. Never really forgiven him after that time. He knocked me flying with the pads. <laughs> uh, and it just shows up in San Devery when we played up there. And the amount of times all of us had seen him bulldozing people and running, I think he caught it. I think Bamsey might have caught it at the back and just tipped it onto him from a kick. And George had about a 20 meter run up. Remember Pete the Meat from San Devery tackled him? And I remember all the Abraham boys just looking at each other as if to say, like, Someone just stopped him dead. <laughs> so, and it was, and it was that such a shock because none of us had seen it before because of how dominant he was carrying the ball. And even for someone who probably drank sixteen bottles of wine the night before and would turn up, and I remember seeing him spit blood on the floor, and I'd be thinking, "What's going on here? What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing?" <laughs> and then he'd go out there, and you'd be like, "Ah, oh, well, if he's going to play like that every week, you know, I'll buy him a bottle of wine as well." <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I think that's what happened there. Yeah. He was, he would smell a booze as well, but he'd be absolutely fine. I just didn't get it. Yeah. No. Yeah. So I'd probably go George. George Nate. Yeah. I would have said no. There's no, no. There's no surprises there. I think I would have probably guessed. A lot of them. Just trying to think. I think it's a lot of the boys I played with. Yeah. When I started, obviously, most of that team now, you look, I think I might be the only one still flying the flag and playing. <laughs> but in, in terms of that team, that I obviously have me being 17 coming down with a lot of the boys mm. around their mid 20s. And it was hard to kind of look away from boys who, was, who I started with. Yeah. Um, because I had such a such respect for a lot of them in terms of again coming into a tough league being young still in college Monday to Friday and then playing with you boys on the weekend it was yeah, just yeah nice though playing with tips because yeah, I know you and tips are friends anyway but, but doing that journey cause you played 20s together as well didn't you what was yeah. it yeah uh, yeah no we've done quite a lot so yeah. my first Abra Avon game uh, with tips on the bench, we both went to the sevens together. That's right, yeah. yeah. We uh, both went to uh, Japan, Japan together, and again, like Abraham. And then, you know, in terms of what Andrew done for the four of us, just to say thank you and give us like a little gift to go away with to enjoy ourselves, and just shows the kind of club, you know. And if the the boss is doing that, you're kind of expecting everyone else to. If someone's got that kind of good heart, then. Me and like even if we spoke the tips, just how how much respect he had for the club as well. Yeah. Um, and yeah, to go through that journey and to play so many games together was was pretty good. And like winning the league with the Ospreys at that point together. And yeah, no, it's it's not probably until you look back and talk about it. Do you do you kind of think about that time when yeah. me and him are on the bench and he was ripping into me saying, I've done a full pre-season in Abraven. And this is my first game. You've only been here a week. <laughs> and just, to... yeah. So even he was going for the juggler. So going down there now, even to the point off the field, like all them boys I've named in our 15 are all characters. They're all in different ways. Um, and it's put me in a good position, especially coming to different clubs because I'm still now getting ripped into left, right and centre up here. So nothing's changed. 
but I feel like I've been put in a good position. Yeah, I, I find like if, if you're attracting that type of stuff, it's a compliment to the character that you are as well. Um, yeah, I, I get ripped out of you know week in week out as well, but you, you're able to take it and give it, which is great. I think. Um, yeah, you, you coach you would coach you with tips as well when you were for for a little bit, obviously before you. Yeah, started off a little bit with him, and then I think he had the World Cup coming up, um, and I just ruptured my ACL, so it was a case of you want to do something to pass over the time and I absolutely loved it down there again another club you know the the chairman and the, the um, committee down there the places I probably enjoyed the most the ones which I can compare to Aberavon and I always kind of say that even when I speak to people um, they were such a good club in terms of looking after people and even like again boys don't get paid down there so for them to turn up every week, you've got you've got to love the sport, you've got to love what you do, and you've got to love the club because if the club are not great, you're just not going to turn up. Exactly, true. Um, so yeah, between both them places, just the the respect I've got for them is uh, is right up there. That's, that's good to hear. And will we see a Becky Tipperick relationship one one day? maybe ending rugby career or future coaching? What do you reckon? Um, well, I keep in touch with him and I think there's more chance of Tips getting a top job. So if I keep him nice and close, maybe he'll take me along with him like he did. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's... Yeah, no, I, I think he's nailed on for the Ospreys job at some point. We need the, the way he is down there. and I would imagine so, but yeah. Won't be too long. So, yeah, well, we'll give him a couple more years first yeah, right, and then right. you just uh, have to tell me when he's thinking about it. i got three more questions for you. Mate. These are set questions. And I, I know you're still yeah. playing, so it might be difficult. So the first question is, can you really narrow down your best moment or your, your, your fondest memory of being at Aberavon? If it, you might have being a at Aberavon. Um, you've had or, or, or however you want to put it. So again, I think the cup final that whole day, I know obviously the result didn't go our way, and, but the whole build up to it was was pretty special. Uh, the training weeks, um, I think it was the first time we trained more than twice a week to try and get ready for that game. And, uh, but that was pretty special. Um, I think the, one of the first times I played 10 down at the club, I think Jamie got injured and I had to step in and play out at half. And I kicked the goal as well. And I remember Steve shouting at me, <laughs> telling me to take it serious because I just missed the front of the post. And, <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, yeah, that was it. Becky, switch on. Oh, Steve, not now, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember when I split my head first time and I still tell her, so I think it was two weeks ago we played Exeter and I split my head and they taped my head up and it looks horrific. So I've got like a proper... Cornhead have gone with a little bit of hair just sticking at the top of it. Quite bad. <laughs> and the boys were like, oh, have you ever split your head before? I said, the last time I'd done it was in Aberavon. And they said, did you have the same job? I said, oh, no, well, i done it in the warm-up. And I remember Sharon just sort of like spreading the cut even more at the start. And I was like, this isn't right. So <laughs> someone was laughing. But then the, they taped it up and just left my ears hanging out. <laughs> and I, I came into the huddle and I remember about seven or eight of the boys just looking at me. And Buddha was trying to talk and be serious before the game. And it was just a case of, he was like, what do you look like? Yeah. And everyone erupted. And even to this day, no, I still laugh at that. <laughs> um, uh, that's yeah. So yeah. I mean, no, so there's a couple of, couple of big ones. Like a, there's, I went to one of the presentation nights at the end of the season. Um, and it was like Kingy, myself, but uh, and Andrew went up in the car. So we'd gone up. Andrew drove. Um, he was planning on driving back. So I didn't, like I said, you, I didn't drink at that time. And I was quite fortunate to be up for an award. Um, and I ended up winning. So next thing you know, between Andrew, Bud and Kingy, they ended up just having a couple of drinks. So they, it turns into, oh, Becky, you're driving the car. I was like, oh, what? So I had a Ford Puma at the time with a big exhaust on the back that made out of a racket. So we get in the car and it was 
obviously Andrew's Range Rover. So I was like, oh, here we go. Now he's like, don't worry, it's like driving a go kart. Told them I think, fuck you. So I got in the car and I was so nervous that I was, my feet were all over the place. They were like, right, just tap the accelerator and now you'll ease out. I don't know what I was tapping, but we were there for about 20 minutes for me trying to find the accelerator. But does sitting on but does sitting on the left of me, and he's just weak laughing. But does got a massive grin in he and like a loud laugh that was making me worse. King Ian is one of the most sarcastic people you'll ever meet. He's shouting all sorts in the back, <laughs> and Andrew's like, "Oh my god, I'm gonna, he's gonna crash my car." He's gonna- <laughs> uh, but 20 minutes later, we got out and uh, we were able to laugh it afterwards. But I'm. Class. That was that was up there with one of the one of the big moments. <laughs> you got home right though, I'm assuming, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I got back to Andrews, got my Ford Puma and revved myself all man. <laughs> uh, okay, second question was do you can you recall um, a team or person that used to play against for Abraham that you were most um not fearful, uh, nervous about playing, like we- weary about playing against a team or a person. Was there anybody or, or a team? I think when I first came down, it was a case of, you know, I was just happy to play against anyone, didn't really look into anything. Um, I think the longer I was down there, it was probably always them niche games where you were thinking like, oh, well, this is a big game. And you'd kind of feel it within the crowd. The, the crowd would just start to fill up. People would speak about the premiership, not having any fans. And then you'd go to a game like that and it'd be, you know, a fair couple of thousand down there. Mm. Um, and even within that, you know, the squad they had, you know, it's hard enough defending a front line, but then when Kipper was the size he was coming in, you'd always be a bit like, oh, just don't give it to him now. Just try and ship it wide. I can do a side-on tackle instead. Then. <laughs> um, and I, like even playing in them games, I remember one time they went to run a move and I just thought to myself, I'm not looking at anyone else. If they hit someone else, he's through. Because I'm just going for him. I think I, I still just got the game line to stop in mind, but yeah, <laughs> it was better than him dragging me over the line. He could run with the ball, but that's for sure. Uh, I just don't know how he mastered that kind of side on running full tilt, but he'd like tilt over to his ankles yeah. and you'd fly, yeah, and it'd just be just a line of bodies no. crumbled up on the side. <laughs> I know what you mean. I know exactly what you're talking about. You had that arc and then that, that, that load. Yeah. You mastered that, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, last question was if you could have your time back at Aberavon again, uh, would, would you change anything? Would, would there anything, would there something that you'd be, do different? Or if there's not, you know, happy? Uh, no, nothing at all. Everything I'd sort of done down there, I probably would have liked to have hit. Like a milestone, well, like and like I know you're saying about 63 games, but you know tr- I thought I was closer to 70, 75. I know it's not many, but I thought I was closer to 100 than I actually was. 25 tries, mind? That's not, that's not bad. You think? It's, yeah, no, I, had a, that as I, well. had, I had a good. I thought you said 35 earlier. I was like, ah, <laughs> oh, Jesus, it's good. Um, no, I, I had a knack of being in the right place with a few of the boys, and um, I'd probably like to have got to around that 100 mark because I felt like. I felt like I was at the club all the time. Yeah. And not to be as not to be closer to 100 was probably a little bit of a because in my head I was thinking, if I'm 35, 36 now and I call it a day, could I go back down our brown, do a job, get 100? And then I was like, could that be the case? But now I'm on 63. I'm thinking that's two seasons. And <laughs> right, that's two seasons. <laughs> and that's every game. Yeah, that's two seasons, but yeah. Uh, no, but the people I met, um, you know, the, even the way my family took to it, because my old man would be down there, the dwarf would be walking around, he'd be chirping to every fan in there as if he knew what he was talking about when he played football all his life. <laughs> and then my cause my grandfather would come down um, and everyone was made to feel welcome. Like you'd go in the bar afterwards and everyone would be sitting there talking, having a laugh and a joke. And, just the whole feel of it all, of the whole, my whole time. Um, I don't think I'd change a thing down there. Ah, quality, mate. That's awesome. Becky, thank you so much for your time, mate. And Thanks, mate. You've heard of Hirsty now, so you're going to finish your career at Aberavon. 
Otherwise, if you're still coaching, I might be all right. <laughs> Top man. Thanks, mate.